There's something strange in the neighborhood. Oh, who you gonna call? Ah, uh, we're gonna find out today here on Two Geeks and a Microphone. <laughs> Welcome to the Two Geeks in a Microphone podcast, your one-stop shop for television, movie, video games, comic books, book reviews, and more. Now, without further ado, here's Steven and Mike. You know... It's only now at this moment that both my dogs are trying to play with me, and I have no idea why. Wow. <laughs> so it first, you talk first, I talk first. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Two Geeks and a Microphone. I am your co-host, Mr. Stephen Boster, along with the one, the only, the most, I have no idea at the moment, <laughs> <laughs> of all, Mr. Michael Shanks. Mike, say hey to everybody. Good morning to all you geeks out there in Geekdom Land. And we also have Mr. Theron, too cool Lowry in the house. Theron, say hey to yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? And then the one who can be named, who should not be named, but obviously should be <laughs> named. I'm trying to do a Harry Potter <laughs> reference, but that didn't come out right. So I totally apologize. <laughs> Megan is here with us. Megan, say hey to everybody. Hello. <laughs> you drinking your caffeine this morning, Steve? <laughs> no, I'm only. If everybody can see it, all I've had is this much, and oh, I'm really got grape sleepy. Drink. Yeah, this it's a it, it's Rockstar grape. I can only get it. I can't find it in any grocery store. I have to go to a certain uh, convenience store. So I'm paying too much for it. But I love grape because mm, it's much more better. better. Cheers, Cheers, everybody. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I got, I got two coffees. So you can't rock star, and I got a protein shake. What is happening right about now? <laughs> <laughs> I got a nice coffee. So nice coffee. <laughs> nice. So, well, Stephen, you can't find that at the at the night job then. Oh no, that is where I get it. Is at the night job. You it's don't get a discount at the yeah. night job. Oh uh, no, they don't oh. get discounts. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> a job that they don't give you discounts on their products. Well, that, the, and it's already right. a convenience store, so you know everything's like twice the price. Well, that that's not very convenient for you. Uh, <laughs> well played. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Oh, goodness. Well, hey, everybody. We're going to roll right into it because we are talking Ghostbusters. Now, in all fairness and all openness, everybody, I've had a crazy week, and I did not get a chance to see it. But Mike saw it, Megan saw it, and Theron saw it, <laughs> and they're going to talk about it, and I'm just going to ask a whole lot of questions, or I may just fall asleep. We'll find out if, if Ghostbusters Frozen Empire was any good, because I'm looking forward to having this conversation today. So, what's the well, game be plan? We Before we do that, let's jump into the geeky news. <laughs> All right. I have one item for the geeky news. I'm going to share that. Mm. DC Comics has announced that they are coming out with another omnibus. They're killing me with these omnibuses because, yeah, first we had the DC <laughs> and Marvel um, crossover omnibus, which so, I really so they're running like. over you back and forth on the omni bus. Oh my gosh, <laughs> they're they're like running over me, backing up, and then running over me again because <laughs> I can't afford all these things. And man, I, I want the the Marvel versus DC ones. And oh gosh, you you know I'm a huge Deathstroke fan, so this is volume one of the Deathstroke omnibus. Um, and it's going to be $125 and it comes Ooh. out this December. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. The sad thing is I had all these issues. <laughs> uh, Cause I, I collected, I don't know, like the first five years of the Destro comic book when it came out. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. that very cover right there, that exact cover when that came out in like 1992, I think, I don't remember what year it was. Um, I actually had a friend who was doing, uh, 
airbrushing at, at St. Clair Square. And uh, he airbrushed me a T-shirt with that on it. So, yeah. Nice. Oh, wow. Because you couldn't find Deathstroke T-shirts. So, yeah, you're still crazy. hard to find. That's crazy because, you know, that looked like mm-hmm. Deadpool with just one eye. Uh, No, <laughs> Deadpool looked oh, like my Deathstroke. Gosh. Oh my goodness! They literally stole Deadpool from hey, Deathstroke. Look like Wade Wilson, Wade <laughs> <Play> Wilson. <laughs> right? It's okay. It's all right. I mean, I yeah. understand. He looks beefy though. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he he definitely does. That's a great cover. I love that cover. Yeah. Him with the with the rifle and yeah, just awesome. Anyway, that's what I got for cool. the news. Um, I got okay. a couple of items for Geek Dar. If we're ready to move Go on for to it. that. Let's do it. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm? Throw with the radar, sir. What's wrong with it? I've lost the bleeps, I've lost the sweeps, and I've lost the creeps. The what? The what? And the what? You know. The bleeps. <laughs> the sweeps. <laughs> and the creeps. <laughs> That's not all he's lost. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for the Geek Dar, I have a couple items. Um, and of course they're comic books because <laughs> I like comic books. Um, one of them is the second series to the extension of the Batman, Batman 89 with Michael Keaton. So they're doing, um, series of those. And it, this is issue number two of like Batman echoes, Batman 89 echoes. And as you can see, hopefully it has. <laughs> Batgirl and Harley Quinn on the cover. Oh, I they... see Harley Quinn, but I don't see Batgirl. Oh, I see it. Yeah. It's see uh, Megan... the red hair in the background. <clears throat> see if Megan can show it better. She's kind of <laughs> she's kind of in the shadows a little bit, but uh, anyway, I got gotcha. you. Okay, cool. Imagine it. The second one. The girls in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? That was good. The second one. Is a love and a gripe at the same time. <laughs> so the second one uh, is uh, Superman, Batman, World's Finest. I've been collecting those lately. Uh, they've been they've had a really good uh, story in there where they went against the um, like the uh, another Superman, Batman from from another uh, universe. You know that multiverse thing that Stephen uh, hates. I'm out. No, no, but. So this one, they had an is alternate. Is that William cover. Shatner on the front? Yes. Yes, sir. That is Captain Kirk. <laughs> and Superman is presenting him as the new captain to the Justice League. <laughs> so it was great. I went into I went into fantasy books last week and and uh Ashley, who runs the place, uh she she goes, Hey, I put something special in your poll. If you don't want it, you don't have to get it, but um I thought you might be interested. So she had the regular cover for World's Finest, and then she had the alternate, which is this. And I said, I'll take the alternate instead of the regular this week, because that's pretty freaking cool. My my only gripe is, my only that's gripe is. Hold on, hold on. That is some A-plus customer service from yeah, Fantasy oh. Books. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. have to say. That's Ashley cool. does a great job. She she does a Ashley fantastic. Does. Yeah, she kn- yeah she she has a good uh, feeling for for the comics I'm gonna like. So nice. Um, <laughs> nice. Anyway, my gripe is though, even though Shat is on the cover, Language, he's not please. in the issue. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's not the issue. He's on the cover. Oh. The issue. I was so disappointed. I'm like, I'm reading it. I'm like, but where's William Shatner? Come on, I want him to be in the issue. I want him to be the captain of the Justice League for just just an issue. Right. It would have been fantastic, but so was that just a bunch of shat? <laughs> That's what we call comic book clickbait. <laughs> yes. Comic yes. book That's clickbait. I, I am I'm claiming that right here, right here, right now. Comic <laughs> book clickbait. And then the other geek dar I have is we went and seen Godzilla. X Kong last night and nice. next week we will discuss that more. So I will save it yep. for the podcast. There we go. And then it. of course the last things I got is UFL starts today, football's back, baby, and the Battlehawks take flight. We're also going there. 
next week. Yes, next week we are going to see Battle Hawks uh, play in the Battle Dome, and I can't wait. <clears throat> nice. Okay. Yeah, save that for your sports podcast. Thank you very much. It does not belong here in the Geek Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Well, yeah, the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Enough said. Mm-hmm. Oh, and he, and he was wearing his KC gear. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. All right. That's all I got for Geek Dark. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> Anyone else got anything? Um, I got a VR headset. Ooh, oh, which one? I, I got the MetaQuest 2. Oh, the new one. Uh, no, Is it uh, the new one? Uh, no, this one's, uh, I got a MetaQuest uh oh. We're live. So I got it's over there. But uh <laughs> but yeah, I got it's 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 over there. And um I'm, I'm listening. Darren just points behind him. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> I forgot we're just not only visual here, we have yeah. audio listeners as well. Yes, behind me is where my MetaQuest 2 headset is at, and I'm diving into the uh the virtual reality realm. So that's where I'm going to take my game into. Uh, it's the next plateau. I mean, I'm pretty much. Uh, yeah. Very well, cool. Steven, Steven got that straight jacket thing. I did. <laughs> the Woozer Vest. <laughs> the Woozer Vest 3. And I love it. Absolutely. Have you used it lately? I use it for right now. I use it. I put it on and then I use, I have that subscription to brain FM. So I use it for focus. So I listen to focus music, but not only does it do that, but it also vibrates in rhythm with the music and stuff. It's really helpful. Oh, okay, cool. I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a friend, you can get the one little, one little unit, you know, where it's just one unit kind of a thing. And that's like 180 bucks. But another friend of mine told me, he said, uh, uh, Steve, if you're going to invest in it, just go all the way, get the vest because you get yep. six units on it. And, uh, and it was, you know, it was, yeah. So it was, it's, it was worth every penny for me all, so far. All I could Ooh. think of when, when you said that you subscribed to brain, what was it? Brain brain. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and all I can do, I, I picture you wearing that vest and then I picture you as either brainiac or Simon from, from the teen <laughs> Titan. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's all got to come back to comic books and movies. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, to, uh, with that uh, VR headset, they have a Iron Man uh, VR game in there. So I'm going to dive into that so I can. Uh, I hear it's good. I hear that, that game is good. Darren, you need the VR headset and then you need that vest thing. <laughs> I don't want to feel the impacts of getting blasted in the chest, <laughs> you know, in an iron suit. I just want to see. Yeah. I just want to see how, you know. I'm telling the, you, there's. That VR is a setting. It is designed for VR. It's designed for VR music, uh, like uh, like Xbox or PlayStation. You can hook it up to that. Even mm-hmm. uh, movies. Uh, I tested it on Lord of the Rings. Um, that big scene where Sauron gets killed in the big goes whoa, you know, in the blast, you start feeling it come towards you and go right mm-hmm. through you, kind of a thing. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. I like it. But yeah, there's a lot of people who with VR headsets that are using these vests as well. So, oh my goodness, we're going back to Ready Player One. That's just what I was saying. just going to say. We're <laughs> jumping in. The- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Skynet's coming for us. It's all I got to say. Right on. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> which, which, um, on the VR too, uh, that's the two games I'm going to get. I'm going to get the Ghostbuster. Uh, they just came out, so I have to Ooh. price that one out. It's it, they uh, Steam, um, not Steam, Oculus has a uh, or Meta would not have uh, sales for various games, and they like thirty percent off. So I'm gonna wait for that one hit like a thirty percent off sale, and I'm gonna get the Ghostbuster. But I already have the Iron Man, and it's actually really cool too. So cool. that's nice. that's my geeky, my geek dart type right there. Oh yeah. wow, Brian Brian Ramsey of Three Geeky Dad says I have the Iron Iron Man for PS. PS4. Four. PS4. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I also have the PS4 headset as well. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, dude! So I, yeah, I don't you have get... the Iron Man game, but I, I but that's how I know I've heard the Iron Man game's really good. So you got to put on the Spider-Man headset and put that vest on. Spider-Man would be cool. 
Yes, I have not done it yet, but I will. Yes, you're gonna have to do that and then report back to us. <laughs> okay. That's your assignment. <laughs> there, there's a game. You have homework. Uh, okay, I got homework. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I give him homework periodically. <laughs> He doesn't always do it. <laughs> uh, speaking of Ghostbusters, uh, uh, love and fun. <laughs> speaking of Ghostbusters, I guess we should move on, right? Yep. Yes. All right, let's hit our main event. <laughs> it's time for the main event. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. <laughs> right on. In the neighborhood. <laughs> well, really, you won't call the Ghostbusters. You just call Venkman's family and friends. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, no, it's no. Spangler family and friends. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Spangler's uh, Yeah, it's family the entire Spangler yeah. family. So, Yeah, it's the Spangler family, yeah. <laughs> Or at least hey, now it's the entire Spangler family. Real and quick, friends. before I forget, Theron, this is for you. Brian Ramsey of Three Geeky Dads says Skyrim in VR is pretty cool too. Oh, Sweet. I'm looking for it. Yep, I want a role playing game. There we go. Brian's inv- uh, 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 <laughs> embracing the VR world, yet Mister I Fear AI. <laughs> I find that funny. <laughs> I am going to make fun of him every time with stuff like this. <laughs> right. Uh, it's again, like I just said to Steven, it's all said in love and fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> but anyway, um, so let's give our overalls of Ghostbusters. Steven, I know you didn't see it. Yeah. Um, so I'll start. Um, I have to say I did enjoy this movie a lot. It, it it is a fun and i think i would say for the most part a family friendly film oh. um just the way ghostbusters should be in my opinion um a lot of great characters we got the return of the originals minus egon of course cuz he has passed on i am glad they didn't do the vr or the vr <laughs> the the uh cgi, CGI uh egon again i think that would have been um redundant well, they, also, they also ended it perfectly right oh yeah 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 i totally agree yeah, it was totally. very special in the in the first right moment, mm-hmm. and i yeah, think that would have a special moment i think that would have harmed uh ghostbusters uh afterlife had they done it again it would have made it cheesy in in, in my yep. opinion um, I think it was done perfectly in Ghostbusters Afterlife, so I'm glad they did not continue with that. We did have a moment that I thought Egon was sort of going to make an appearance, and I kind of would have been happy with it. We'll explain more because I don't want to give any spoilers away yet. We're not in spoiler territory yet. Um, but overall, I think it's a really fun movie. It's enjoyable. It fits the Ghostbusters franchise perfectly. Um, and out of a, let's see, for, for, uh, for a scale, let's use ghost traps. Um, (laughs) on a scale of one to 10 ghost traps, I will give this a seven. Um, yeah, Yeah. I concur. concur. I'm not, I'm not going to go higher than a seven just because I don't think it's, I don't think it's definitely not the best Ghostbusters. The best Ghostbusters is number one, hands down. You mean the yeah, first not. one from the 80s? Ray yes. Parker singing. Ray, Ray Parker Jr. Yes. Who are you going to call? Yes. The original is the best, hands down. You're okay. never going to top it. You know, there's just how, no way. How, how does that compare? I can't remember. I like Ghostbusters the last too. One. Really? You like you Ghostbusters like Ghost- too? Excuse me, yeah. everyone. Um, I have something I got to do here real quick. Okay. <laughs> we just we just we threw Theron into the ghost containment. <laughs> you guys didn't like Ghostbusters too? I thought Ghostbusters that's the one that with uh what's the uh the the picture the guy was in the picture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, again, I, I'm not using any more airtime to talk about Ghostbusters too. <laughs> I I think Ghostbusters two is the. 
uh, it's my least favorite of the Ghostbusters franchise. Well, let me ask you this because this is kind of the well, I don't count that one. Sorry, do, Steven. Do we call this kind of like the Paul Rudd kind of Ghostbusters because he's in both of these? Or I, 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 how is it compared to the first one with Paul Rudd? Let me say it that way. That's probably a better way to say it. It was a new era. Or the new, um, oh, new, the new era. Yeah, it's okay, a new yeah. era. He wasn't really like one of them. Uh, his character is really not one of the main focal points to the uh new storyline to be honest with you he's like he's there but he's like not there okay so new, it's we'll really with new kids. era megan i like how you said new era so of this new era of the two movies of the new era how did it compare to the previous one in my opinion the previous one was going off in nostalgia it had a huge nostalgia factor going for it okay um and then you brought back all the original Ghostbusters. You bought, brought back almost every original character you could with, with the exception of Rick Moranis. Um, yeah. And from what I understand, that's Rick Moranis' choice. He just won't come back to Hollywood. Um, mm-hmm. And I would have loved to have him back in Ghostbusters, by the way. He, he was a fantastic character. and love him. I love his character. Um, I would have to say uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife is better than uh, Ghostbusters what's the new one called frozen, frozen, empire. frozen empire um but that's not to say that i didn't enjoy frozen empire i enjoy both movies but i do think afterlife is a better film okay okay that's just my well, opinion. enjoyable it's still an enjoyable film oh yes yes definitely an enjoyable film yes okay i, I would say yeah both both of them really have a, a really good impact i i think and really they they focus around um egon's uh granddaughter that's really she's mainly the focal point to the yes yes coming up and uh in the first movie in afterlife it was it was mostly about you know it was her but it was like both of the kids you know hey uh uh her brother and her and and how she was she she kind of sells this character like egon does spot on I, i i think that's actually pretty cool especially with the jokes especially with like her just her uh her love for science and technology everybody else is not so it's as, like a little mini me action going on oh yeah oh yeah especially kinda. with the glasses oh man but in kind of yeah i mean okay. she's 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 her own character but you can tell that she has a lot of the same mannerisms that her grandfather did and mm-hmm. um yeah i i think she's she's a good continuation of that character but not okay. the same character so yeah. so what was the main premise? Like what's the main storyline of what's happening in this movie? Uh-oh. Uh, pa- everybody paused. I don't know I mean, if that's a kinda, good sign was, or not. It was two different to me it was it was like two different stories that was going on at the same time. You ever know it was like that in the same in the first movie too. They're kind of telling two different roles as far as like where where things are taking place. Okay, wh- and and let's go with afterlife afterlife they were talking about how they were talking about the um how the the how the daughter egon's daughter how she was and she didn't know her father and all this coming of uh where he where he was at and and all the things that was taking place on the form the dirt former why they call him dirt former and then you (laughs) have the story of the kids how they were basically becoming more integrated, it, well, trying to find the acceptance and where they were because they got kicked out of their place. And then you had the story of um, what's that? Uh, uh, the the demon lady, the the demon dog lady that was um, oh, that yeah. had the two dogs that he was. Um, what was that? Zul. Zul. There we oh, go. Sorry. We had Zul. Oh, yeah. 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 There we go. And then we had that same stuff. We had three different, like three different stories in three different acts and they were all kind of like they all coalesce at the end so it's the same thing that happened in frozen empire frozen empire you had uh paul rudd and his character they're trying to just make it (laughs) in 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 the firehouse and making sure that they got everything plus you have the ghost story of this uh these fire breathers and stuff like that uh you know trying to keep this ghost contained this one big ghost that's basically you know, because they have the uh, ghost compactor and it's becoming overloaded. And it was like, well, how can we keep on fitting ghosts in here? We don't know how. Well, we'll figure that part out later. So it's it, and, and then you had uh, you had the granddaughter, uh, her storyline of how she didn't feel like she she couldn't do anything because she was young and 
she needed so she didn't have an outlet because they wouldn't let her become an actual Ghostbuster because because of child labor laws and stuff like that. Is that about <laughs> is that about covering to to a certain extent? Yeah. Like uh, how the story I'd was so. pretty different. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's okay. I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Theron, out of a on a scale of one to ten, uh, mm-hmm. ghost traps. What what number would you give it? Uh, I'll see. I'll give it. See this one. I want to give. I'll give it a seven as well for sure because okay. it was certain things in there that was kind of like throwing me off because I'm like, you know, obviously they didn't know how to use. It was funny because they was just like, oh man, look at this this nostalgia thing. This is a ghost trap, and then they all of a sudden knew how to use it or they didn't know how to use it properly. And it was just a lot of whimsical things. I was thinking to myself, like, okay, Wait a minute. Who, do that who, who are you saying didn't know how to use it? Um, when they were, okay, so that uh, the opening scene when they were in the car and they were trying to use the little go-kart, um, the, uh, what's that, the uh, remote control car trap for the flying demon yeah. ghost. And then all of a sudden they had a drone one yeah. um, that was in the top part in the top canopy. I was like, yeah, I know it was fun. How come you didn't use it at first? That little drone car thing wasn't going to, it was going to be out of range for it. And well, on top so of that too. They but, learned how to use the traps in the first one in, in Afterlife. Um, kind of. They was throwing it and they didn't like let, like well, the, this is uh, also was like that? three years later. Yeah, this is three years later. They know how to use the traps by now. Um, now the drone was new. The drone they didn't Effectively? have. What's yeah, that? The, effectively though it's just like they, yeah. they were still kind I mean, of whimsy about that okay <laughs> yeah i'm just saying it was it was kind of it was some of the stuff was kind of cringe it's just like come on yeah i know how to shoot like do, do we not know how to shoot the proton pack is everybody just gonna shoot and scream well, when they do so you, wait, wait a minute so you were saying that there's possibly a little bit of continuity issues to a certain degree so, yeah, that, that's what I was thinking too. It was like it was some some of the stuff was like, well. To it, be it fair, they're sense shooting sense. a proton pack from a moving vehicle too. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. You, you, you try shooting shoot shoot something from a moving vehicle and see how well you shoot. <laughs> Grenet, I shoot Grenet, the bird Grenet. all the time and I hit. <laughs> oh yeah, when like I'm driving. <laughs> I'm just yeah with your VR headset on. <laughs> uh. So and the, but the crazy part about it was that was kind of like very cringy. Was the fact that how they were driving the the Ghostbuster mobile, and it was like they were like swaying, and it, he couldn't control the car. I was like, "Why are you going that fast?" And she wanted to get out on the gunner seat, and I was just like, "Not downtown! Don't do that in the city. You're not. You, you can't control this." And when every time they shot the uh, proton uh, uh, beam, it kept like throwing everything off. And don't get me wrong, I understand like when they catch it and it's but and it's moving around, they're trying to control it. But I'm like, this is this isn't this isn't a good look. <laughs> so that kind of threw me for a loop there. But um that that was just some of the stuff I thought was like, okay, I, I think that you guys, you know, you, you kind of came to a point where yes, after three years that they've been up and everything, they should know how to use what type of trap and they should know when to shoot the proton pack to a certain degree but it didn't seem like they were learning from anything it was just like oh well we're here now we this is what we do as ghostbusters <laughs> we make it up as we go along very much we, yeah, like this podcast yeah, that's, by the way that's that's <laughs> what it seemed like <laughs> making us <a> <laughs> all right megan give your overall yes yeah, there you what's go. your score spoiler megan? free overall by the way oh yeah um, yeah <laughs> go ahead I want to go with an eight and a half or eight point five. Okay, okay. Because okay. I don't. Know. I really, really like it. Um, I, I think, I think both of the of the new era are fantastic, and I really think with both of these, they're they're going a great way with giving the, a new generation to it, mm-hmm. and. I, don't know. I just really like it. Okay. Which, which one do you like better? Would you say Frozen Empire or would you say Afterlife? Which of the two do you, do you like better? I'm ready. Which one's much more better? <laughs> I, I can't say one's much more better. But... Okay. If if we sat down to watch Afterlife and and Frozen Empire, which one are you going to pick? Uh. <laughs> 
I would go with, well, they kind of have the overall overarching thing. It's like the bad guy that's like Zool, how Zool was able to control stuff, even though he was, you know, in a, and it was in a, in its confinement, he wasn't fully like released. And it was the same thing for the, the, whatever the, I can't even remember the end, the, uh, the bad guy that was at the end of Frozen Empire. It was like once he was able to get out, that's when he was, you know, more, uh, destructive. But at the same time, he was able to, do things in the physical realm that affected a lot of what was happening, like, you know, freezing stuff over causing all this mayhem. And it was, and it, and it kind of kept, it kind of kept that consistency. Like, okay, we know the big bad, he's going to do all this devastating stuff. He's going to take over New York, kind of like what the state foot marshmallow man did and, and what Zul did and everything. And it's just like, all right, so they're going to find themselves in a pickle and they're going to work the, and work their way out of it. And it's going to be one of those moments where it's like, we know it's going to happen. We all know how it's going to happen. But I thought it was a pretty interest, an interesting take at the end when, and it's, I'm going to butcher his name, um, the fire wielder, how he was able to do some of oh. the things he was doing. Um, um, his uh, name is N- Nadim. Nadim. Yeah. Nadim. R- Razamati, Razamati. Yes, his character. Yeah. <laughs> now his character was his character. It was one of those things where I was very surprised at what he did and how he did it. I'm trying to keep this a little bit spoiler free, well, by the way. Nadim oh, is his character name, by the way. His real name, the actor's name, is even harder to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't even going. I ain't gonna try that one. <laughs> yeah, Kam- Kamal, 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 that's cool. Kamal Najani. N- 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 sorry, I'm butchering his name. I, yeah, it's even it's harder good. to say than his character name. <laughs> yes, um, his character was uh, his character was something else. So it was very, very like you know. I just want to be able to sell some stuff so I can get some money to the point where, oh, my family has this particular like legacy in order to trap this this frozen ice god or demon. Rather, and the way they did it was by you know containing him into this sphere, it's sphere, sphere, the ball. There we go. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> and then it was just like one of those things that um, one of those things where he he had to learn his true potential to control fire. And I thought it was pretty interesting where he was able to control the proton beam at the same time when he was just now learning how to control fire. And he was barely getting it, you know, the scene where it was just like, light the candle with the lighter. And he was like, I'm trying. I can only do it so much. <laughs> well, I think we veered off into spoiler territory. So oh, well, dang it. I mean, it was one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> so here, let, let, let's let's play the official baseball team. You just wanted to do that. Well, yeah, of course I wanted to do that. <laughs> We're talking about Ghostbusters. We have to. We're going to have the oh, official Ghostbusters spoiler alert. Okay. All right. Well, I I think this movie is really good. I, I enjoyed it. Um, again, it's not as good. as nowhere near as good as the original, but none of them are as good as the original. First of all, you're not going to capture the magic of the original. It, that's like Capturing it lightning. was lightning in a bottle. Yes, exactly. Um, well, you know, like Slimer coming back. Slimer was in the. He oh. was in the. Uh, yes, he was there I, that whole entire time. Oh, he I was, was an, thrilled. Was Slimer ad. was back. I. Me too. Yeah. Um, Muncher is great because Muncher was the one they brought in for for uh, Afterlife because we yeah. rewatched Afterlife after we we went and seen uh, mm-hmm. Frozen Empire, and I like Muncher. Muncher's fun, but the. <sighs> Slimer's the original, and he's the yes. best. If yes. I remember Slimer right, was awesome. when we did uh, Afterlife, I gave that one a nine out of ten, and I said that I didn't only it it, it only didn't get a ten because there was no Slimer because I wanted to see Slimer. Again. Oh wait a minute! So you gave Afterlife a nine. And you just gave this an eight and a half, I think. I know. That's why I said they're okay. really close. Okay. So so yeah. then you would say Afterlife is the better of the two. Much By more better. <laughs> <laughs> Much more better. Cheers. <laughs> Anything I can do to drink more caffeine. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Afterlife. <laughs> Steven's Afterlife just over there drinking his great uh, caffeine. Was full of nostalgia. Because it pretty much brought back everybody. And so I don't think yeah. it, uh, it Hudson came back in that one. 
he came back in this one though. Was uh, it Ernie in, Hudson? In the, no, Ernie, Ernie was in both of them. Ernie's in both of them because he, okay. he okay, okay. he's the one he's the money backer funding yeah. both Ray's mm-hmm. occult books and the Ghostbuster uh, headquarters. He's he's the money behind the whole thing. Oh yeah, okay. So that was that was cool. Yeah, okay. They they actually kind of explain that a little bit at the end of Afterlife, but then again, you kind of seen it in um, Frozen Empire, which I was thinking to myself, like, okay, if that was the case, and they well, knew they Ernie, was going to have an issue. Ernie with was the, there busting ghosts too at the end of it too. Mm-hmm. He suited up along with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you talking about uh, at the farm. Yeah, when they just well, no, so no, when, well, both of them. When when the Ghostbusters show up at the end of Afterlife, um, Ernie Hudson's with them. He, he uh, what is his character? Winston, Winston, yeah. Winston, yeah, Winston, yeah, Winston's back with them. So they had they had all four Ghostbusters in Afterlife. In Afterlife, and then of course this one they had three of the four because obviously they're not going to have um, uh, yeah. yeah. He got he got back. Yeah. Yeah, now, yeah. now, what I was talking about with the, the scene that I almost thought Egon was going to be back, and since we're in spoiler territory, I can I can reveal this. So if you don't want to know this, then pause the video, <laughs> go out to the theater, watch it, and come <laughs> back. We'll wait. The, one, two, three. All right. So there is a scene where Phoebe, <laughs> uh, she goes out to the park or something to play chess. And she sets up the chessboard, and she's yeah. by herself, and she moves one piece, and then another piece moves. Well, they kind of mm-hmm. did that in Afterlife, too. And my first thought was, oh, that's Egon. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's there with her. And then it turns mm-hmm. out it's a different ghost. And, it was a random ghost girl. Let's just put right. it that way. Random, random ghost, ghost girl, girl oh. which was re- ridiculous on how... Okay, so the one scene I did, I did. This is the reason why I'm giving it an eight on it. Is because the scene where when they got to the point where they needed to get like a uh, was it? it was a spirits e- extractor or whatnot where they can separate a ghost from like a physical object. Like say if it's like a uh, like the uh, like the think of the Annabelle doll, but you taking the the demons. Oh out of the yeah, Annabelle yeah, doll. yeah. That scene where she took herself out of her, her soul out of her body so she can interact with the ghost girl was the most irresponsible and the most <laughs> craziest thing ever. And this is what I was getting at right about. This is what I was talking about when it was like, you would think that they know a lot more about the ghosts, like the traps and all that stuff like that, because for some odd reason, they don't see something. And then all of a sudden they become experts right at it. And they was like, Oh, well I can only, it's never been done before, but I can be able to try it out and I can only stay like th- two or three minutes outside of my body, but it, I'm going to automatically go. My soul is automatically going to jump back in. And I was like, yeah. what? No, you can't do that. And and that part threw me for a loop. And then she got duped by a ghost girl that was being controlled by the, the frozen, right. the frozen guy. And I was like, what the hell? So <laughs> I'm sorry, Kristen, but it, I was like, <laughs> That oh, part now I gotta put loop. the explicit warning on. Man. Oh, really? <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I'm, <laughs> but it was no, Brian's not on, so we don't have to put the explicit warning on. <laughs> that as soon was as the Brian comes on, that's when we gotta do that. <laughs> and, I, and I thought that was a stretch. Plus, the original, uh, the original uh, Ghost Compactor, it was being fractured uh, throughout the movie, and I was thinking to myself, like, okay. Well, Ernie, how come he didn't like they said it was going to take about they they said with all the ghosts that was in that uh, that ghost compact is going to take them several years in order for them to transfer it to the new uh, facility that they have. Yeah, the new containment facility. You know what they need? Mm -hmm. They just need to build the portal um, from Danny Phantom to the ghost zone. From what? Danny Phantom. I don't know what Danny Phantom oh, Danny. is. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, everybody yeah. here knows what you're talking yeah. about. I have no clue. And I was like, why would they? <laughs> My boys would watch that. Uh, yeah, Danny Phantom. It was actually a really good show. Yep. It was a good show, right? I thought that's all I could think about. <laughs> and, and Angie's over, Angie's in the chat going, ha ha, yes. <laughs> yeah. 
I, so apparently I, Angie knows be what open, it is. Yeah. Megan, I thought when they were saying, you know what they need? And I says, all they need is love. Just <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> <and mercy. laughs> no, oh, but as soon as. Let's as not break out Beatles about, songs, please. <laughs> as soon as they started talking about like uh, um, problems with storage, I was like, you just need the ghost zone. Like, just throw them in yep. the ghost zone. Yep. And, and I was thinking like, the same thing nice too. And that was the part that was really throwing me for a loop. I love the fact that the mayor shut them down again and mm-hmm. then reopened them back up again because there was a need to take care of the ghosts. And it seemed like in the city, in that in that particular uh in that particular listen, they, they call that this called Ghostbuster Earth. Everybody's fun with just ghosts just flying all over the place. It's not like a big deal. It's a it's a nuisance. But that's why you call the Ghostbusters, right? So you, you realize you realize who the mayor is, right? Yeah, that was the wasn't that the original mayor? Uh, no, he's not the original mayor. He's the original head of the EPA, and he's the one that shuts down the containment uh, uh, system in the original film. And yeah, yeah. After he shuts it down, that's when the ghosts run havoc and and take over New York. So he's and the mayor. mayor this time. So so the mayor, is, they're having a meeting mm-hmm. with the mayor on what to do. And the mayor goes, is this true? And, and Vinkman goes, uh, or no, someone said, everything was fine till Dickless here shut off the containment oh unit. unit. <laughs> and the mayor goes, is this true? And Vinkman goes, yes, it's true. This man has no dick. <laughs> <laughs> so in the new one, I was waiting for Vinkman to say it. <laughs> and Vinkman didn't because somebody in the crowd yelled out, "Hey, Dickless!" Oh yes, that's exactly right. Somebody caught him in the, in a in a background. He was like, <laughs> "Now you got to put the explicit on, Stephen." <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You can't talk Ghostbusters without that. That's hilarious. Oh, it was, oh, he was great. Was it was great. Okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah. Was, uh, was... So he he's the mayor in this one, which I loved. I, I thought was great. I love that they yep. brought him back and brought him in as the mayor. Um, and yes, I was just waiting for Vinkman to call him that. Yeah, it was so funny. <laughs> another one, another throwback that they so so. Uh, uh, Megan, you said that you love the fact that they brought in um, Slimer for this movie for Frozen Empire, but mm-hmm. at the end credits of afterlife they brought back sigourney weaver but she wasn't in frozen empire which i thought was i was hoping that she would she would come in and kind of save the day a little bit but she didn't do that but it was okay though yeah they didn't bring back sigourney weaver um and and i love the way they brought sigourney weaver back in afterlife Mm. because she wasn't actually in the film she was in the after credit or not the after credit the mid mid credit so yeah. then the credits are rolling and her name comes up in the credits. <laughs> and and it was funny because we rewatched it and I forgot about this, but mm-hmm. her name comes up and I'm like, wait a minute, Sigourney Weaver wasn't in it. And they they roll the, the mid scene credit right there. And mm-hmm. uh and and when they do, it's it's Sigourney Weaver, it's Dana and and Vinkman, and they reverse roles. He's doing the well, she didn't do that. They're doing the the whole uh, ESP testing thing with yeah. the shock treatment is what they're doing, and she's giving it to Bankman, and it's hilarious. <laughs> it's so funny. I like, how do you that. know how to get? I I I I basically I tip the cards. <laughs> no, no, no. He said he said he marked them. He, he yeah, marked the cards. Yeah, yeah. Because every one of them he got right. So what do you see? A um, couple swiggly lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You got these marked, don't you? Well, yes. <laughs> and then she shocks him. <laughs> it was great. She also shocks him when he awesome. says that he only shocked the guys. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I only shocked the guys. <laughs> now, I think another another In point fairness, was... he was paying them though. Was it? He was getting he was paid paying, them. He was paying them for the test. Well, you know, they did say that he could keep the five dollars, five dollars, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I was gonna say, um, uh, uh, the mom, the mom character in this one, Paul Rhodes' character, I believe he's he's more his character was more uh as the as the father figure that they that they needed 
to kind of like bring the gap together. The mom, in a sense, she was just like, ah, I can care less. <laughs> you know, she was her her role, to be honest with you, was it was actually pretty funny because she had that no that nonchalant attitude and she was trying to get control, but she was like, I have no control. So all real character well, was trying to. You know, I got the feeling the she was trying to make uh, Paul Rudd's character, who's Gary, Gary yes. Gruberson, by the way, Gruberson. Uh, oh. I, I think she was trying to make him into the dad role, even though he hadn't proposed to her yet. So yeah. it was to me almost that, that whole, you know what? I'm going to force you into playing dad. So you, so you'll propose to me is <laughs> that's what I got. Yeah, that's how I felt about it. Yeah, they wanted to be more an inclusive family, which I thought was actually pretty good. That's the one part. I I mean, that's why I'm going to keep it at an eight, even though it was like certain elements of the movie that kind of like that one scene, like I said, where she extracted her soul just so she can have the interaction with the ghost girl. That part was just like. That that was that was that was taking it way too over the over the top for me, and I was just like, okay, that's that's not good (laughs) because I'm like. That, that was a that was a kid. She she literally shut up on herself. She killed herself because she she died and she became a ghost. And so just so she can have an interaction with a friend. What? She didn't die. She didn't die. She didn't die. She just okay. So if your soul leave your body. What happens? Okay. <laughs> she Danny Phantom did. I don't know what that means. I have no clue what that means. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you guys are your anime stuff. I am. That, it's a cartoon. That's not. It's, it's a cartoon. You, it's, not, it's not anime. It's not. Right. Okay, everybody. There we go. We're in the cartoon anime discussion now. No, 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 no. Time out. <laughs> <laughs> you whippersnappers in your anime. <laughs> well, first of all, Darren, I'm going to have to review this because I swear you said a seven because I said a seven. I we had the same thing. And then you just upped did it I say to a eight. Seven? So, yeah, you yeah, did. You I'm did at seven. This. Seven. And Megan messed me up. She said eight and a half. Because <laughs> I really like the movie. Well, Theron's definitely a part of the podcast now because he's now blaming Megan. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, now, as far as uh, uh, the girl, I'm trying to remember her name. Melody. Uh, Melody. Is, Mel- okay, wait a minute. There we go. No, no, no. no not, said it was not Perry. Melody. Oh. Um, Phoebe? Phoebe. 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 As far as Phoebe goes with her you know, uh, changing herself, removing her soul, however you want to say that is, um, mm. whatever she did to turn herself into a ghost, quote unquote, for for momentary reasons to communicate with the ghost, which personally, I think that's silly. She was already communicating with the ghost. How do you if you already are communicating with the ghost, what do you need to do that for? That no, she wanted to top. be a ghost. She wanted to know right. the feeling of being a ghost. But on the second hand, she's a teenager and teenagers sometimes do dumb things which you know? her mom wanted her to do <laughs> again <laughs> well, no. did she she come up with the yes one? yes she said to go make stupid decisions yes uh, she did okay. maybe she did yeah, it, i know in the, the mom, first one, yeah in the she first one she both. says that the first one she says get into some trouble and then she doesn't <laughs> yeah and then they tear up the town trouble. and then and the second one, she tells her to make stupid mistakes. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I, I'd say that's a stupid mistake, but that's kind of a, yeah, you could lose your life type of stupid mistake. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was a little weird. And then the, the thing, another uh, thing was, is Stephen that they muted sh- himself. <laughs> Oops. I've got dogs going crazy over here. Sorry. So I, I, all of a sudden I can see you over there in the other camera and the other window <laughs> talking with no. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for Japanese to start coming out, <laughs> right? That's like a Japanese. Movie. What is that? This yeah, would be anime. Japanese this is cartoon. Just Japanese sub Japanese bubbles gonna come out of his mouth. That's yeah, funny. that'd be cool. That's funny. That'd be cool. Anyway, it's all good. Continue all right, on. So, Sorry. All right. So, um, all right. Let's let's talk about the 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 end of uh, be all type ordeal. The big bad. We already know the big bad was the the frozen god. He wanted to freeze over the earth because of he got stripped of his power um, from a long time ago and everything in that nature. But when you're in the galaxy into, far far away, I mean, yeah, you, you got to say it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Every time you say a long long time ago, you have to say the galaxy far far away. It's it's a rule. <laughs> 
Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So when he got out and everything, um, they yeah. had to uh, they had to figure out how to beat him. They couldn't beat him with. I mean, there was there was only so many uh, fire. You know, what was it? Not fire fire protectors. Anyways, they're fire fire. It's, the guys, the, it's like fire, I can't remember what they called it. Defenders or whatnot. There you go. Fire nation. Um, yeah, essentially, <laughs> that's what it was. Like it. It felt like it, to be honest with you, because he was able to just take flames and was able to, like, you know, control he, he it. He pretty much fire just a firebender. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the firebender guy. So he was... Uh, <laughs> so the first thing that evil guy, I mean, the, the big bad did, but he he went out, he tried, to, he went to a random shop, and it was like a, a fire flame shop or something, like a smoke shop or whatever, and he killed the guy that was there because he was like, oh, are you a fire you know, defender, he was like, yeah, sure, whatever. Dude had his back turned, and he just got, you know, dealt with the right then and there, and I was just like, oh, he didn't even do nothing. So, <laughs> so after that was, after that occurred, um, when it, when it was time to, when it was time to fight, the only person that, uh, that actually had the proper proton pack because the proton packs they were using it, it became null and void because he was able to freeze it or he was able to like you know right yeah knock it out so it was it wasn't able they weren't able to do anything um phoebe is her name right yes 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 she was able to well he, he actually froze the proton the the, the beam the beams yes that that um, they shoot out he actually froze them solid yeah and she was the only one who kind of in the moment was able to modify hers with a what was it it was a was it a bronze coat it was a bronze coat yeah. on the metal part where it can be able to transform her proton pack to be a little bit more powerful than everybody else a little different than everybody else which i thought was pretty interesting i was like oh man how come she didn't do that for everybody else like how come she didn't let them know that she can do that well, but she it, just she melted down bronze in like a split second and then she dipped her, her proton right. pack, and <laughs> but in all in fairness, it. she only has so much time, so she didn't have enough time to do all the proton packs. She could only do one, and I, I like it because it's showing the ingenuity, the Spangler ingenuity, yeah. and that you know that she's obviously getting from her grandfather because he would have yeah. he would have came up with that had it, it had been had he still been in it. Yes. So yes, I enjoy it. Yes. Do you have to turn your brain off a little bit for that? Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But again, this is Ghostbusters. <laughs> yes, true. Oh, and you said that the, the scene where the uh, chess board was that um, that uh, where she was able to that, that Egon was going to come back. I thought it was going to be the scene like how it was in the in afterlife where he came and he helped her control the proton beam because as she was in uh, in this one in Frozen Empire, she was going at it. She was losing control, and he was in a, in a frozen guy. Oh, you basically. thought he? I was, did think that too. You I thought, thought he was going to show up and guide her where, again. Yeah, but the family I, I came through totally and helped her out this time. Yeah, yeah, but again, I'm kind of glad they didn't go that route because I feel yes. it would have been uh -huh. it it, it would have harmed the original. I, I think it's you know Spangler's done his duty. Um, he's gone. Rest in peace. That, mm -hmm. That's that's the way I look at it. I, I really with the with the chest, with both of those scenes, oh. I really thought that they were going to do that too. And then we went and rewatched Firemaster. The yes, there we go. And then because uh, at the first one, the end of the first one, he disintegrates mm -hmm. under the particles, which is how, which is why Phoebe, uh, <laughs> Phoebe tells Melody that she's seen it because she watched her grandfather. Going yeah. the light. Yep. Mm. I actually do like that uh that uh type of illustration too, how it was that when he was uh ascended and everything and how Phoebe was ascended, she was like, Well, I died before, you know, my body was able to get burnt to a crisp. That's the reason why I look so good. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> melody. <laughs> melody, yeah, melody. The ghost is melody. The ghost is melody. Yeah, she uh, died so around sixteen. Yeah, so she died around sixteen years old. So, yeah. you know, you know that the lesson is there. Make sure you're wearing clothes that you like when you die, because those are your <laughs> that, those will be your ghost your clothes. Ghost clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't That's like crazy. dye in your underwear or something like that. 
<laughs> Otherwise, you're forever running around in your underwear. Apparently, ghosts can't change clothes. Mm-mm. <laughs> Apparently, they can strike matches in this one. I mean, she died with the uh, match. I, I want to say it was, the, it, I think, in her storyline, her story arc, is that well, she's the cause of her family, or the, the house yes. fire that that uh, that's what it kind of seemed like to me to me as well too. Like she died before, and she was the one that burned down the house on accident, and then she had the book of matches. That's why she was able to utilize it at mm-hmm. the end of the movie. Okay, so that was pretty cool. I thought that was well, that was a really good connection. Like um, like Phoebe said, that was her tie. Like that was right. the thing that she was attached to. Yeah. Oh yes, that's right. That's the thing that that kept her uh, in that room. Okay, that's mm-hmm. good. that was the one thing that she because she they they made the comment that um, each ghost that are in that you know realm before mm-hmm. they dissipate and go off to the next plane. It whatever. was her unfinished business. Yeah, it was her unfinished yeah. business that she had to take care of, which is why she struck the match. And then the mm-hmm. fire master was able to control that and use it yes. to, to defeat the enemy. There we go. <clears throat> yeah. Which I thought uh, was pretty cool. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Um, Angie said, uh, for those listening, uh, it tied her to, to the mortal plane. So the mortal plane. Okay. Right. I don't know if it's, it's like every time I get onto the podcast, I will come like ready and prepare. And then as I'm like, everything goes out of your the, brain. It does, man. Like I, I forget names. I forget like the because uh, I want to say so much and I don't want to like the time around. I'm like, why am I flaking on this? I knew this name in these in these uh, certain segments, and I write it down. Even when I write it down, I'm like, I'm already down here, and I didn't even talk about all this other stuff. <laughs> it's called getting older. That's, it's called getting older. <laughs> that's what that. Is? That's what these great things are. Huh, I thought it was like Lent or something. All right. <laughs> No, 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 Stephen. Stephen, men don't get older. We become more distinguished. Ah, nice, nice, nice. So nice, we're nice. distinguished. So you're yeah. saying women get older and they don't become more distinguished? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> women just hey, get everybody. older. Men, we become. It's now time to start wrapping up the show, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are at one hour in the mark, but that was pretty good. That was funny. That's uh, funny, yo. <clears throat> okay, but I think so, the overall so movie was, was your, <laughs> Let me hear you from you guys on this. What was your favorite part of of the movies? Of this oh, movie, man. excuse me. Gosh, you got to make me think hard cuz it was a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> you've got you still got Godzilla on the grant on the brain. I know, man, Godzilla is fresh and yeah, I I wish uh, Ghostbusters was streaming already so I could have watched it again. Um I I don't know. I I love First of all, I love it when when the originals come back together. Uh, of course, yeah. you know, of course, I'm going to love that, you know, because I love the originals. I love the dynamic between the originals. But on the other hand, I do enjoy the Spengler family. Um, mm-hmm. they, they are very fun. And I, I think they're a good addition to the Ghostbusters. Um, I like the way they've done this. They, they've done it right. They handed it, the mantle down to the next mm-hmm. generation. And and I enjoy that. Um, Winston was great in this. I love yeah, how he's, say, yeah. he's backing everything. You know, he he's he's the guy behind everything. And it just goes all the way back to that that uh, original scene, the original scenes in the original film when they first hire him, and uh, Janine is asking him all these questions. Do you believe in ESP? Do you believe in spirits? Do you believe in this? Blah 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 blah. And he goes. If it if it uh if it includes a steady paycheck, I'll believe anything. <laughs> and yeah. then by by the end of it, after they defeat Zul, he goes, "I love this job," and he kind of does that again in here. And it's just mm-hmm. oh yeah, I love that. I absolutely love it. Um, and then yeah, uh, Slimer, Slimer returning. The original favorite ghost of the original Ghostbusters, you you just gotta love Slimer. He's just fantastic, yes. and I love how he's just roaming through it randomly, wreaking havoc. He's fantastic, great. Mm-hmm. So those are just some of the things that I really really enjoyed. Hey Mike, you took mine right out of my my <laughs> you took the ones I was gonna use. <laughs> I, I love that. Shit. 
Yeah, I like what he said. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, I want to do I'll this. I'll second everybody. that one. Go ahead. I want, I want to do this, everyone. We've got one more score that is popping up, and I'm going to bring her in. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Angie! Oh, Angie! Okay. Angie! I know, but uh, you're giving a score, so I want to give you an opportunity to <laughs> give your score as we round out the end of the show. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would give it a 9 out of 10 just because of Slimer, because I was wanting to see him in the previous one, and then it was like yeah. the, I forgot what they called that. Muncher. Uh, Muncher. Yeah, Muncher. Yeah. And I was like, oh, dang it. And so when they showed him in this one, I was like, oh my gosh and so that's why i would give it a nine out of ten um but yeah the whole like her leaving her body thing i was like okay well you know, yeah because it was it wasn't that wasn't the intent for what it, the unit was for okay so oh no it why, definitely wasn't oh, it, no. it wasn't and then nobody showed her like it wasn't explained or expressed okay. throughout the movie yeah. to, be up to, it. to be devil's advocate she is a genius I mean, this yes, for someone, man. she's not like on, a. Man. I learned this by osmosis. Like, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna be honest. Oh wait, 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 wait. is this <laughs> how she learned it? Oh, just pick it right out of here. Okay, there we go. Oh, <laughs> that was good. That was good. That, that was good. <laughs> I was like, it, but I'm it not was... gonna explain that for the audio side of it, Stephen. <laughs> I made it look like I was picking it out of my butt, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we've already got this. I know, like you pointed over there. Okay, why not? I mean, yeah, why not we've already it? said dick and everything. So you might as well just. Well, Mike said dick, so I don't know why. He said dick list, rather. <laughs> yeah, dick list. Get it right. All right, everybody. We are losing control. Just so. All right. All right. <laughs> It always happens when we have more than more than three people on this show. It's all good. This is it's true. All good. This is true. <laughs> this is very That's true. funny. Nate, but I'm no, like, other now, than that. I think. I want to give it an eight now. <laughs> well, no, that's fair. That's fair. But that's kind of why we do the score at the beginning because beginning. Yeah. after yeah. we have this conversation, there's a possibility we could change the score. So, Theron, if you are officially changing your score, I say that's that's totally fair. You can. Yeah, do I'm gonna that. give it eight. Yeah, I'm gonna give, right. because I did like uh, I did like the fact that when they say, "Oh, well, if you guys would have just been patient," what um when um Winston was like, "If you guys would have been patient, we would have got you." moved over into the new facility but you know you gotta do it this you know the the crazy way and everything and then it's we was already like you know uh pairing for that which i like I, I, that's why i really like his character because it's just like i know they're not gonna just leave this thing like keep stuffing and stuffing and stuffing and, and this monster is just basically building up just power and stuff like that they got to be able to figure out how they're gonna get oh, yeah. around it so i thought that was pretty cool yeah but yeah, that's the the whole leaving her body thing. Like they're like, do something stupid, and I'm like, that's what you chose. Out of this yeah. stupid well, thing. it was yeah. stupid. That was. <laughs> oh, it it and, was stupid, all right. And it, oh, and it played <laughs> right into what the what the uh, monster. I mean, what the, yeah. what the bad guy wanted to do because it was like once she was able to leave her body, he controlled her soul and yeah. for her to speak yeah. the words so she can right. be able to release them from the ball. And I was just like, what? But but I will right. say I that I kind of saw that coming. I'm gonna be honest. Because oh, when they it. when they saw the little thing where it was making the noise and saying the words and stuff, I'm like, foreshadowing. I, I know yeah. I saw it I saw it as soon as Melody <laughs> was introduced. As soon as they introduced Melody, Melody, Melody. I was like, Oh, she's gonna she's gonna betray her. Cause I could yeah. see, oh, yeah, I see yeah. that part. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that yeah. part coming. You're right. I didn't I, know I, like I what, you know. Yeah, but I didn't know well, I how she was going to portray her, though. I think right after she was introduced, uh, she kind of has an interaction with the uh, overall bad guy too, which yeah. leads you to yeah. um, like it's not the first time. It's pretty early oh, on. It was though. after it was after um, uh, Phoebe and podcast uh, encountered her at the diner. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she they was do like podcast characters. Podcast aged man. <laughs> I know. I was like, he had a growth yeah. spurt. A little bit. Yeah, that kid little hit a growth spurt, spurt because we rewatched uh, Afterlife, and he He's looks tiny. like he looks like just a little bitty kid yeah. in Afterlife, and then yeah, 
And he's almost, you know, his voice has changed and everything. I one. know. Yeah. I was sitting there like, this dude ain't full Asian. I'm just saying. I do love. Okay, so the reason why I'm bumping it up to an eight is because I love how podcast his his character with Dan Aykroyd's character. Oh man, dude, Dan Aykroyd, oh, he's yeah. a legend to me. How they, Dan Aykroyd was like in there, and they started to use some of the the stuff that they had, like the, yep. the ghost yeah. mobile and everything. They worked so well man, together. It was really good. They they, team, they, they're good. It was a really good comparable team. team. I forgot about their podcast, and yeah, and that was so, awesome. so Stephen, this is this is great. This is great. So, uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah. What is his name? <laughs> uh, podcast? <laughs> no. Um, gosh. Oh shoot. Ray. Yeah, Ray. Ray stands. Uh, okay. Dan Aykroyd. Ray. So Ray and podcast. They have a podcast together. Imagine that YouTube and YouTube show. Sure. And mm-hmm. they have people come on with objects, and Ray oh. scans them with the with the Ghostbuster <laughs> scanner yeah, and everything. Yeah. yeah. To see if it has some kind of ghost, you know, whatever in it. You better hope it does. Yeah, you better hope it does because you know. if it doesn't, podcast smashes it with a big hammer. He's <laughs> like the people <laughs> are like went on it. Right. Yeah, it's perfect. He goes, Harley like, went on it. Yeah. <laughs> so this old lady, she brings a watch and she thinks that her her husband's spirit is in the watch, right? And it's an old Casio watch from the nineteen eighties, mm-hmm. you know, a digital watch and all this stuff. It's a computer watch. Yeah, well, right. Calculator watch. Yeah. And and Ray scans it. He scans it, and there's nothing there whatsoever. And immediately, podcast out of nowhere, just whack. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this hammer, this big old hammer, Funny. comes down and smash. And the old lady face He's is like, bright. She's the just like, or something like that. That was hilarious. And, and it's like a Harley mallet. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's so oversized and it's great. And then uh, Ray just looks at her, and said, "Sorry, ma'am." The smash gets all the all the all the, the likes views. or all the views. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so funny. That's funny. That that part was really funny. I, I love the fact he did that two times. He did that with the watch, and then he also did that with the proton pack. I mean, he yeah yeah he yeah beat the crap out of the proton pack. It, it got uh, the proton yeah, right pack end up getting taken over by like the little red devil thing. It was yeah oh yeah 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 the spirit that jumps in and out the of everything. The, uh, the it possessor. Was the possessor. Yeah. 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 That was a good. That was a good ghost. I like that ghost. That, that was pretty I cool. The possessor was going to end up at the end of the movie when they took over the truck for the Stay Puft yes. Marshmallow, but it wasn't. It was the little Stay Puffs that was actually. Ah, yeah, okay. I thought it was. <laughs> well, I even made a comment when we were watching the film. I was like, "Oh my God, we're about to go into maximum overdrive, but better." <laughs> yeah, because maximum overdrive is the worst Stephen King movie ever made. You know, that's the movie where all the trucks t- uh, come to life and they're, oh, they're yeah. driving by themselves. And then the one has the big green goblin head on the front of it. And mm-hmm. I thought for sure we I, I agree with you. I thought for sure uh, it was going to take over that truck. And I was like, oh, it's yeah. maximum overdrive now. <laughs> yeah. But no, I totally thought the same thing there. And I was like, oh, this would be so cool. And then I was like, oh, it's just a little marshmallow guys. Which they are so adorable. Yeah. Oh, I love the mini Stay Puffs. The mini Stay Puffs the mini are stay terrific. Puffs. I'm glad they came back too. Right? I, I do like them. And they're so demented. I love it. I love them. <laughs> they're they're so, they all, they doing stuff to each other. They kind of reminds me. They kind of remind me of like um, uh, the minions. The, yes. the the minions go really to the minions minions oh and rabbits. God. I don't know if you have ever played the rabbits game, but yeah, they go like yeah. minions. Mm-hmm. They act like minions. But the rabbits. minions aren't oh, nowhere oh, near oh, as demented God. as the mini Stay Puft are. <laughs> but the rabbits are. The ra- yeah, the <laughs> rabbits are. Uh, well, true. Yeah. Cool beans. All right. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I think that's sweet. about it for Ghostbusters. <laughs> right? Right on. Love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was really good. Very cool. Well, hey, everybody, thanks so much for joining us here on today's episode of Two Geeks and a Microphone. So um, we are going to go through here real quick. If you want more Two Geeks, please check out our website at www.to the number, number two, two. geeksmike.com. There you'll find all things Two Geeks, but also you'll find it to all of our illustrious pages, such as our 
Kofi page. If you would like to help support us, go to ko-fi.com slash two, the number two geeks. Um, and there you can support us. We've got different tiers and different things that are going on there. Or you can even check out, it's our link to everything, even to our merch page. But if you want to go directly to our merch page, where we got some fun, cool shirts and stuff, you can go to www.2geeksmikemerch. That's the number two geeks Mike merch. M-E-R-C-H dot com. Also, if you want to reach out to us, feel free to shoot us an email at show at two geeks, Mike dot com. Um, Mike is really good at uh, keeping an eye on the mailbox. And um, so if you have any ideas, concepts, thoughts, funny anecdotes, anything you'd like to share with us here at our two geeks family, go ahead and shoot us a line. All right. Well, uh, with that, Mike, what else do we have? Okay, with that said, if you made it this far, please go and give us a like and a subscribe. Go subscribe to us on Facebook. I post a lot of funny memes, and I also try to keep you updated on upcoming things on the show. Not to mention you will get um, notifications when we go live, because we go live on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. And speaking of going live, we go live every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. You do the math for the rest, because I don't like math. Um, and I think that is about it, Stephen. I think you were going for the world record of how fast you could do the ending there, Stephen. Why, thank you. <laughs> it's called, it's called, I have time structure issues, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's called being an adult. <laughs> That's being as my wife would say, my wife would say this is called being an ash hole. <laughs> 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 All right. So <laughs> on that note, <laughs> um, so I will close out this show over and out. And who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us today on the Two Geeks and a Microphone podcast. Tune in next week when we will have more news and reviews. Until then, may the force be with you. <laughs>